Glory to God. My name is Kathy Brox, and this is the LUTG Radio Show. Glory. Hallelujah. And we are on LUTGradio.com, WKKP Digital Broadcasting. And you can also check us out on Amazon. Download the app or the podcast at Amazon. And the app is LUTG Radio. Glory to God. Via podcast and video. We got you covered. Today's uh, message is glory to God. But first, we got to put on our armor, y'all. We're going to say what Jesus says. And, uh, hey, we're going to basically let him do the talking. Let the Lord do the talking. Amen. I like that. (laughs) All right. So here we go. You know we're in a Bible gateway. And I got uh, Luke 24, Ephesians 6. Hebrews 11, and today we also have uh, Proverbs chapter 9. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and get it going. Luke 24, 45 says, Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. Mm. You definitely need understanding. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, for thou art worthy of all the glory, the honor, the power, and the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Let's put on our armor. Ephesians chapter 6, starting off with verse 10. Finally, brethren, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. Now, verses 18 and 19 is for your testimonies and it's for and it's to keep your armor up. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may be that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Glory to God. Mm, mm, mm. God is good. Don't you feel stronger now? I mean, honestly, glory to God. Feeling good in the kingdom of God. (laughs) God is good. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse uh, 1 through 6 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The Lord is that substance. The Evidence of things not seen. Jesus is the face of God. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. 
Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch, E N O C H, was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. I want to please God. You should want to please God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Seek after God with all you have. Mind, body, soul, strength. Proverbs 9 and 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. The fear, that is the reverence for the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And uh, that's the prospering of the soul. Mind, will, emotions, imagination, and consciousness. And the knowledge, and that's the intimacy, uh, that's revelation. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. And... Uh, uh, I should say understanding, you know, you're getting, get understand. And so understanding would be the revelation and the knowledge is the information, but sometimes you can have information, but not really know what it means. It's kind of like, um, I just had to correct myself. It's kind of like having a dream, but not really knowing what it means. Got to give you a dream. And then you're like, okay, Lord, what does that mean? And then he'll he'll tell you, okay, well, this means this, this means that. Or he'll have somebody to come along and tell you, you had a dream and this is what it means. Romans 12 and 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye be present. I'm sorry, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. This is today's word. Amen. That's the scripture of the day. Romans 12 and 1. You are always to understand it. Your body, your temple, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And you are to honor it always because God needs to use your body to present the gospel. Speaking boldly is not so that you can get likes on some social media or downloads. It's for the glory of God so that he can win his people back to him. So he can draw every Jew and every Gentile back to him. Salvation is not just for Gentiles. It's for Jews and Gentiles. It's not just for Jews. It's for Jews and Gentiles. It's for all of us, the whole world. So keep your bodies holy unto the Lord. Glory to God. Luke 2.14 says, Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace and goodwill towards men. Now you often remember that scripture. And if some of you are scratching your head like, I know that scripture. Where have I heard it before? Christmas time. Hallmark cards, greeting cards. Hallmark, y'all can come up, y'all can become a sponsor. That would be great. <laughs> greeting cards, greeting card industry, yes. And um, commercials for Santa Claus and um, department stores. They always, you'll hear them saying, "Goodwill to men, peace on earth, and goodwill to men." They often leave. Sometimes they'll leave out glory to God in the highest. 
but they they basically hijacking the last portion portion of Luke two fourteen, the B portion. The A portion is before the comma, and the B portion is after the comma, and so they're hij- hijacking the the B and the C. <laughs> on and on earth, peace is B, and goodwill towards men is C. So that's three things. Gl- when you glorify God in the highest. On earth, you get peace because there's peace in heaven. And then you get goodwill towards men because that goodwill is in heaven towards men. And goodness is the glory of God. Goodness comes from the Lord. Goodwill is a surrendering of man to man. It's it's man surrendering unto the Lord. Will... Your 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 will is um is your choices in life, the choices that you make. And good will, good the only thing the only person that is good is the father. And so good will towards men is father's the father's good will desires for you, you know, to to be put upon you. And the only way to get that is to go back and to glorify God. And glorifying God is a surrendering Unto the Lord. Amen. So glory to God. In the highest. Amen. Joshua 719 says. And Joshua said unto Achan. My son. Give I pray thee. Glory to the Lord. God of Israel. And make confession unto him. And tell me now. What thou hast done. Hide it not not from me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Even in your troubles, you want to glorify God. No matter what is going on with you, in good times and bad times, you want to glorify God. No matter what's going on, just like your heavenly father wants to, I'm sorry, just like your earthly father wants to know your dad, wants to know what's going on with your son, what's going on with your daughter. Tell me about your day. The father wants to hear about your day too. So while you talking to your earthly father, include the heavenly father. Heavenly father, this is what's happening with my day. This is what I've been going through. Lord, um, I'm believing for deliverance for X, Y, Z. This is what I want. And um, God will make it happen. As long as it's according to his will. Because his will for you is only good. His will for you is only good. Good will towards men. His will for you. His desire for you is only goodness. Amen. First Chronicles 16.35 And say ye. Save us O God of our salvation. And gather us together and deliver us from the heathen. That we may give thanks to thy holy name and glory in thy praise. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is um, this is like reading Matthew chapter 6. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. If we forgive men that trespasses, our heavenly Father will also forgive us. But if we forgive men that not forgive not men that trespasses, our heavenly Father will not forgive us. Give God glory in that praise. Um when when you when you're singing a praise and worship song, let's say uh you get the crowd hyped and you're like, Yeah, let's give God the glory, yeah, but in your heart you're going, Yeah, I'm making them do that. That's for me. You just took glory from God. 
he won't be able to use you anymore. And the moment that you say that in your heart, the Holy Spirit goes, goes from you. He may be with everybody else, but he leaving you. You need to repent. Don't take nothing that don't belong to you. God gives you enough so much that you don't have to take his praise and his worship that is coming from others. He he uses you as a vehicle, as a house, as a body to speak through and to worship through and to sing through. Don't ever say that you caused a crowd to praise you is what you're saying. When a crowd is worshiping the Lord, they're worshiping the Lord. When they want to give you praise, they'll say, you did a good job. Thank you. I appreciate I appreciate you uh, learning music and learning how to worship God. And even when they say that, your response should be to God be the glory. Let your praise come from the Lord. Because when God, when you do good. God will tell you, I really like what you did. Let the praise come from God. When somebody gives you praise, say, to God be the glory. I'm glad you appreciated the music, but to God be the glory. Let God give you praise. Amen. Now, some of y'all are like, well, what, I can't say thank you? No, I can't say thank you. What I can do is give glory to God. Even that little bit, that little bit of, oh, thank you so much. No. Who have you saved? When was your blood on a cross? When did you sacrifice and get 39 lashes across your back to save the whole world? You didn't. You did not. And because you did not, that was not your son on the cross. Don't take God's glory. And some of y'all are saying, well, my son died in the streets and they were killed by so-and-so. That, that's still not saving the whole world. And even when you're being martyred or when you martyr yourself, which you shouldn't. If you don't do it because of the love. Because of love. Loving, loving God. He will not recognize it and you will go to hell. When you martyr yourself for the sake of yourself, that's called suicide. And you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. That is taking your own life for your own glory. God ain't going to ask you to take your life. If he wants to bring you home, he'll bring you home. You'll be like Enoch. I'm up. So don't martyr yourself. Fight the good fight of faith. The Lord will strengthen you. He'll he'll send angels to strengthen you. God will send angels to strengthen you. You ain't got to worry about who you who you going to impress or what people think about you and whether or not you got on the right clothes or the right jewelry or whether or not you have enough money, God got you. Money does answer all things. It does answer a host of problems because oftentimes all people need is just some money. Your belly is panging because it needs food. Well, if you had some money, you can go buy some food. You tired of sleeping in the streets? It'd be nice if you had an apartment or a house to go to. Well, if you had some money, you can go pay for a house. You can go buy your house. Glory to God. Glory to God. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have joy fulfilled in themselves. God wants you happy 100% always. Don't take his glory and you'll be eternally happy. You'll be eternally happy. God already proved it to you by sacrificing his son on the cross and telling you that the only way back to the father is through Jesus Christ. Don't swear by anything. Instead, trust on God. 
Psalms 30 and 12. To the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. God loves you and he absolutely wants the very best for you. God ain't playing when he says he loves you. He for real. He ain't going to hold back nothing good from you. So don't ever let the enemy make you think that God is holding back something good. He ain't. He didn't hold back nothing from Adam and Eve, and he ain't holding back nothing from you. He ain't hold back nothing from Jesus. Nothing good. You're like, well, how come Jesus don't know when the end will be? If that was his business, then he would know. It ain't his business. That ain't his business. Because if Jesus know, then we'll know. And if we know, then the enemy will know. And he'll come and try and do all kinds of things to stop it. Just like he didn't understand that taking the life of Jesus provided for salvation for the whole world. Had he known, he wouldn't have done it. The Jews did not kill Jesus. Jesus gave up his life. He sacrificed his life. The father, the father punished Jesus. Even if, let's say, for example, even if Satan could have killed Jesus, what would that have done? Remember, he tried. He tried to get him to jump off the, off the, off a, a high mountain and kill himself, commit suicide. He tried to get him to do that. He couldn't get him in those 40 days of being tested. He could not get, he could not kill Jesus. And him and Jesus was, what well, was him, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. He couldn't kill Jesus no matter what he thought of. Not at all. He could, get, he could not get Jesus to leave the Father. Because essentially that's what he was trying to do. He was trying to get Jesus to leave the Father and to come worship him. And Jesus refused. So if he could not, Satan did not kill Jesus. Jesus became a martyr because he loved us and he loved the Father. And the Lord honored his martyrdom. He's the only one born without sin, allowed to be a martyr that could save the whole world. You're like, well, what about the people that were killed, his disciples? Yeah. They were killed because they loved God and they loved Jesus and they would not surrender to Satan. They were told, you know, we'll we'll say we'll spare your life if you go ahead and denounce Jesus. They knew the truth. They're like, nah, bro, that ain't happening, sister. No matter who came at them. Nope, no child. Uh Uh-uh, no king. Just like Daniel. Daniel, They told Daniel, you get up in that window and pray again. (laughs) We're going to straight up jack you, dude. you going into the lion's den. <laughs> what down you do? Open wide glory to the Lord. <laughs> he, he stretched his hands out wide. He was like, look. <laughs> he's either going to be you or me. But I tell you this. I'm not denying my God. I know who he is. I know he is the truth in the life. I know that he will save my life. No matter what you try and do to me. God got me. Yup. <laughs> we know that, right? We know that Jesus got us no matter what is going on. Had he told me when I was 18 that those things would happen to me, that I would be killed, that I would die, I would not have gone to school. No joke. I would not. I don't walk into traps. I walk away from them. Nobody walks into a trap unless you're a police officer or you military and you know there's some danger going in. That's that's your calling. Regular folks, <laughs> we don't walk into traps unless God tells us, okay, I want you to go into the enemy's camp and I want you to stand before that person and say this, this, and that. Moses did it. He went straight up to Pharaoh. 
The Lord said, let my people go. <laughs> we don't go, we don't move without the Lord. And so had God told me that that was going to happen to me, I wouldn't have went. Come on now. I ain't crazy. <laughs> you know what I might have done? I might have gone to church. Look, I need to get saved. I just found out something about to happen. All right? Because <laughs> I had been trying to get saved my whole life. I had been trying, but, you know, people could saying, tell me, oh, you a good girl. You ain't going to go to hell. Good girls go to hell. I got a sermon about that. It's on, uh, <laughs> got a message about that. That's on, um, YouTube. Good girls go to hell. Don't tell somebody that they're so sweet and so nice that they don't need salvation. Nice people need salvation because they will burn just as well as, a, as somebody that is mean and honorary. If you in sin, if you, if you have not been forgiven of your sins, you will go to hell. I don't care how nice you are. Your grandma that did not accept Jesus Christ as their as their Lord and Savior, without the mercy of God, she went to hell. Your grandpapa, your aunties, your uncles, your teachers, your favorite teacher, your favorite principal, your favorite boss, your favorite girlfriend, your favorite boyfriend, your best friend. If they didn't accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they are now dependent on the mercies of God. I was dependent on the mercy of God. I thank God that those people in that class love me enough to pray that that teacher loved me enough to pray. She loved me enough to pray and believe God. Thank God I tried to get saved when I was four. God honored my desire because I had been trying to get saved. He honored my desire. And he used that woman, that teacher, and that other student. He used that woman to save my life. That teacher was giving me CPR in the hallelujahs. Father God, in the name of Jesus, save her life. Save her life, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father. I'm only imagining what she said because I know there was power in the name of Jesus. When you call upon the name of Jesus, all shall be saved and delivered from evil. And after I woke 20 minutes later, because I asked them, how long was I out? I don't even <laughs> There's no time in death. Whether you in hell or in heaven, time stops. It stops. There's no counting of time because everything becomes eternal. Everything becomes eternal. And so I say that to say is after I woke, like I told you before. Glory to God, I woke because somebody prayed for me. After I woke, I went and started asking people about heaven and hell and about salvation, about, you know, what is this? I didn't know the word salvation. I didn't know anything. I didn't know. Even though I knew the Lord's prayer, I didn't know what it truly meant. I didn't know that I needed to confess Jesus Christ as Lord. I didn't know. I didn't understand and nobody bothered to tell me. They kept saying, you a good girl. And I kept saying, a good girl went to hell. I know that was hell. They kept telling me, oh, your lights went out. No. That was utter darkness. That was hell. There were things down there that you don't want to be bothered with. That was hell. And then suddenly, I saw a bright light pierce the darkness. And the only thing that I know that can do that is Jesus. I knew immediately that that was Jesus. Don't even ask me how I knew, but I knew that that was Jesus. And that was my God. That was the God I wanted. And a little time later, he told me. He gave me a dream. He said, you are going to get saved. 
because he had me to dip in the water around the throne room. It's a big body of water. When I dipped in, like I told you before, all the water turned black. That was my sin. All the water turned black. It was blacker than black, blacker than the blackest black you can find. Utter darkness. When I was there, there were no kids out. When I went, when he took me to heaven in the dream, there was no children playing outside. There was no people walking around. It was me and the Lord. And he told me, jump in the water. And so I jumped. He baptized me from heaven and told me I would get saved. You feel me? Jesus baptized me from heaven and told me I would be made whole. I would be cleansed. You can't get better than that. The Lord's telling you, they ain't going to tell you, but I'm going to tell you. And I'm going to make them tell you. I'm going to make them offer you salvation. I'm going to make them tell you. And sure enough, he did. But of course, before that, the enemy kept coming around me telling you, Jesus ain't real. You got to accept this God, not not Jesus. And I was like, nope, that don't register with me. That don't register with me. No. Second Samuel twenty two fifty says, therefore, I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and I will sing praises unto thy name. I did encounter some people in college that they will argue back and forth about God, about Jesus. None of them offered me salvation. They kept telling me things like, you want to get high? And I'm the daughter of a police officer. I'm the daughter of a nurse. Do I want to get high? No. No, I do not. Anytime I would encounter them, they would be arguing and fighting. This God, that God. And to them, it was fun because they were defending their faith. But I didn't understand. I was like, why are you fighting all the time? And so I didn't want that. I was like, that that doesn't register with me. They're constantly fighting. I didn't hear not one person presenting the gospel to the other people in the cafeteria because they would have done better had they said anybody in here want to know about Jesus. And I'd have been me. I want to know about Jesus. Let me tell you about the goodness of God, about the glory of the Lord. That I would have listened to. But every time I went in there, I got a headache. Because they were just fighting and fighting. And he was trying to win this one soul that believed in something completely different. And this guy was just steady fighting him because he was coming at him all loud and shouting. But had he just presented the testimonies of Jesus Christ, he would have won the entire cafeteria. Of all those that weren't saved. And I was among one of them. And so I would stop going to the cafeteria for all that arguing. And I started eating outside. And I kept wondering about that dream. And about going to hell. And I kept wondering. And I and I, I just believe God. I believe God. I just said. He said that I will get saved, so I just had I just so I decided I'm just gonna have peace. He told me I'm gonna get saved. I, that means, okay, then I ain't gonna go to hell because he said I'm gonna get saved. It took about nine years, nine or ten years, because I got saved at 28. No, 26. Sorry, I got saved at 26. It was right before the Oklahoma bombing. I think that guy's name is McVeigh, because I was supposed to go to Oklahoma. For a job. I was supposed to be in that building. And then the guy that saved the guy that gave that offered me the um that walked me through the confession of faith, he said, Well, you can go anywhere you want to go now. Meaning, no matter what happens to you, you still going to Jesus. I'm like, Well, wait a minute. And I'm supposed to be living some kind of life, ain't I'm supposed to be doing something? What do you mean go anywhere I want to go? I'm like, okay. And so 
I kept asking God, help me with the prayers that I learned with my grandmother. Because I learned the Lord's Prayer with her, even though I didn't get a copy of the prayer. She told me to memorize it. And so I did. And so I didn't have it before my eyes, but I had it before my ears. And she said, you know, my arthritis is so bad, I can't really write it down another one. But I'll let you look on the paper as I read. And I want you to memorize this. And so I memorized the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is so, it's such a blessing to me. I just keep, I kept saying it over and over again. And I, I would just keep saying it over and over again. And I remember because she gave it to me as a little girl. And throughout school and throughout high school, I would it would just keep coming to mind. I would just keep saying it over and over again. And I still didn't get saved. It wasn't until college that God said, For, you are going to get saved. You will never leave. I'm, I'm summarizing. And this is my interpretation of him baptizing me in heaven. You will not leave this earth again until you have gotten saved. First Chronicles 1634 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Thank you, Lord, for saving my life. Thank you, Lord, for saving my life. I spent the last 24 years telling people about Jesus, telling people that God is good, trying to volunteer at church and do everything I could to be an example of the love of God. I was always told, treat people the way you want to be treated. Love. Honor God always. Treat people the way you want to be treated. See, people will be giving me the Bible bit, bits and pieces. And God would would do something for me as a little kid. He would open up the heavens and allow me to hear preachers preparing their sermons for Sunday service. So I would go, I would go into the backyard and that, that would be my service. I would go into the backyard and I would hear Sunday services. I would hear bits and pieces. I was thankful because every time I heard the word, I got so excited. I didn't even know why. It was one church I did go to. But they said, you couldn't get saved until you're 12. And I was seven. I said, but I want to get saved. I want to say that what y'all saying. They're like, no, you got to wait. And so I forgot about it. So that's how I say. I didn't know. Because they kept telling me, wait, wait. You a good girl. Little kids go to heaven. No. After they reach the age of understanding without Jesus, they need mercy. Babies get an opportunity for salvation. I don't know about kids that pass the age of understanding. Unless they have been denied salvation. Offer salvation to every person you meet. Invite them to church Love on them. Love them the way Jesus loves them. He does not hold back salvation from anyone. People may walk away from him, but he will pursue you. And he will offer you salvation and tell you the truth. And if they're telling you the truth, you still deny him. He will allow you to deny him, but he won't stop loving you. He will not stop loving you. He'll even have people praying for you. And sometimes he will tell people, stop praying for him. Like he did Jonah. He just said, look, Jonah, I'm going to have to put you in this spot because you keep running away from the things that I've told you to do. I need you to speak to these people. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. That's like going to the west side of Chicago or the south side 
And nowadays, the north side of Chicago, some people are like, I don't even want to go to Chicago. Chicago is not as bad as what, you know, as the stereo, as the things that are being said. What Chicago needs is a drop of blood from Jesus, not the blood of man, because it's 600 people killed. I mean, you can have throughout the, all of the United States, maybe a thousand people killed a year. But lately, 600 of those people are from Chicago or killed in Chicago. I shouldn't say from Chicago, but killed in Chicago. And the reason being is that the people that worship Satan, and there's quite a few, it's about 10 million plus. But it's not even those. This is a different group of uh, satanic worshipers. These are the ones that worship Satan and they do things like prostitution, sell drugs. And they need power because the things that they're doing, they can't get power from God to achieve some of the things that they're doing. And so they have been praying over the city of Chicago to take over the city of Chicago. They may smile in your face and say glory to God, but what God are they glorifying? It's not Jesus. And some of them have even started saying things like, well, my God is Jesus. They don't worship Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, the one born in Nazareth. So you got to pray for your city, whether you're in Chicago, New York, Amsterdam, wherever you are. Because there's people all over the world praying that you don't have freedom in your city. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you want to, now is the time. Now is the time to give your heart to the Lord. Remember, God loves you and he came for the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I confess my sins before you this day. I give up my past life with Satan and close every door to all Satan's devices. I confess Jesus as the Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me and for bringing me back to where I once was. From this day forward, Lord Jesus, I will be sensitive to how you feel. I won't hurt you. I will obey you, Lord Jesus. I ask you to present me to Jehovah in your name. Lord Jesus, I believe with my heart, I confess with my mouth, that you rose from the dead, that I am saved and receive you today, wholeheartedly, 100%. Make me a light in a dark place, and from this day forward, I will leave this place and share you with everyone I meet and everyone I know. It's commitment, Jesus. I will get this world for you. I pray this prayer to the Father in the name of Jesus. I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus with evidence of speaking in tongues and uh, for the edifying of the body of Christ Jesus by the will of Jehovah God. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. You just got saved. Jesus loves you, beloved, and so do I. Um, One thing you do got to understand is that... um. Drug dealing is not the only problem. Uh, Satanic worship is in every area of industry. Satanic worship is in every area of industry. They even go into the churches and take on leadership roles so that they can conduct how you worship and who you worship and when you worship. And they'll, they're starting to do things like taking down the crosses off the churches, taking the name Jesus out of the sermons. They'll say God instead of Jesus. When they pray, they won't say the name of Jesus. When, um, when they're, they've already taken down the Ten Commandments, of course. It's lots of things that are being done to remove they were the name from the memories and the minds and the hearts of man. Because if you can't remember the name of Jesus, you can't call on him for help and for deliverance. But I'm going to say it for you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. See, even though you may not remember, you can repeat a thing. So repeat after me. Jesus, 
WKKP Digital Broadcasting, LUTGRadio.com. We say Jesus all the time. My name is Kathy Brocks.